Namaste and welcome to another episode. Now we have come to number 13 and there's a saying in English, 13 for luck. I hope all of your luck in self-improvement is huge now and week by week you're practicing all this. It is for me very easy to speak and tell you my ideas but to implement those ideas, you have to work very hard. That work I cannot do for you. Nobody can do for you. Swami Sri Kantanandaji has great hopes that all of you will work very hard. Today, the topic which I have chosen is mental strength. Mental strength, especially during this pandemic, has become a rare commodity. We know that the virus is attacking the physical body and it is creating an illness. But those who are not affected physically by the virus also are facing terrible mental issues. So what we require in this pandemic, apart from oxygen and all the medicines and good rest and good food, we require mental strength. Mental strength is going to solve a lot of problems. And that is what we need to practice. Not only youth, but even people who are at different ages in their life, different levels of maturity in their life. We all need to, together and individually, work towards mental strength. Why am I saying that mental strength is so important? That is because sometimes our mind becomes our own enemy. Our mind creates problems for us and it takes away the strength and makes us very weak mentally. So it is not necessarily external things that give us mental weakness or mental strength. Most often it is something internal. Whenever I speak to youngsters, many, many youth who are coming these days for counseling to VIHE Hyderabad, I find that their own problem is that they think too much and they don't orient those thoughts. They don't balance those thoughts. They accept everything. One day we did reading. You know, many of us read many things. But the moment you start applying those things to yourself, there the problem lies. People who are well-placed, who are intelligent, who are educated, as well as people who are very unfortunate in this terrible situation that is going on all over. All people are getting depressed. That shows that you lack mental strength. Depression, stress, sorrow, excess of brooding, these are all signs of mental weakness. Whenever we want to do something, we have to first diagnose. I've been saying this very often. You have to diagnose and only then you, from that diagnosis, you can come to the solution. You can come to the problems and then their solutions. So unless we are able to diagnose ourselves or with the help of others, we will find that our mental strength is becoming weaker and weaker. We are just dissipating all our strength and weakness catches hold of us. This we cannot allow because as human beings, we have a very powerful instrument and that is the mind. If we are taking away all the power from the instrument, then we need to recharge it. It is like your laptop or your phone, which you have to charge regularly because after some time, the battery gets down. Then we charge it. Then how is it that we are allowing all the weaknesses of the mind to take away the charge and we are not recharging it at all? Then we say that we are very unhappy we are terribly frightened of this pandemic. 
We are terribly frightened of life. You know, any little thing frightens us. So what we require to overcome that fear is mental strength. So you have to see the lives of great people. You will find that any achievement is dependent on mental strength. You look at the scientists, you look at the sports persons, and of course, you look at the great spiritual giants of the world. All of them have achieved something due to their mental strength. Without mental strength, you cannot succeed. Just imagine when people showed Gautam Buddha the dead body or the old age or the suffering of the poor. He did not get depressed and say, okay, I can do nothing. He used his mental strength to renounce everything. It must have been so difficult for him. People very often sympathize with the, the persons he left behind. But many people don't sympathize with him. Imagine what it requires for a prince to give up the entire life as he knows it and go in search of the solution to this problem of old age and death and suffering. That is what makes him the great Lord Buddha because he had mental strength. All his achievements come because of his mental strength. Look at the story of Lord Jesus Christ. He is suffering intensely because he, his living body has been nailed to the cross. But he does not lose his mental strength. Physical suffering does not make his strength less. He says, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Those who are torturing me, I don't want to curse them. I don't want to say that they should be punished. Instead, what I have would like to say is, let they be forgiven because they do not know what they are doing. So if they commit a mistake by, they commit a crime like this, only because of their ignorance, then please don't punish them. It shows nothing about the greatness of the people who put him on the cross, but it shows the greatness of Jesus Christ who could forgive even in this trying situation. Now, when we come to Sri Ramakrishna, you find what great mental strength he has. He renounced everything. And then when people said that, you know, especially his mother was so worried, that he's losing his mental balance because of his sadhana. We should get him married. Usually a person would have said, no, no, I cannot get married because I have renounced the world. Sri Ramakrishna said, don't worry. You don't have to search for the girl. There is a girl here marked in that place. Please go there. You will find that girl. And therefore, in spite of being completely renounced, he accepted the bond what he considered to be as the bondage of marriage. Theirs was a very beautiful marriage, very spiritual marriage. And this could only happen because both of them had great mental strength. We have the example of Holy Mother Sharada Devi. You know, once they were all going to the festival. This was in 1885. Uh, uh, and they were going to a huge Vaishnava festival. The women devotees were also going. They said, Mother, can we take Mother along? They asked Sri Ramakrishna. He did not give an answer. He said, find out from her if she wants to go. Of course, the mother would have loved to go. But when she heard, what did the master say? What did Sri Ramakrishna say? He said, ask her. Look at mother's mental strength. If we are deprived of what we want, we feel so upset, we feel so depressed. Mother wanted to go, but he knew, she knew that he did not want that. He was leaving the decision to her. Who can make a decision? Only a person who has great mental strength. Then she said, 
no, I don't think I will go today. She is depriving herself. She's not feeling sad because she is deprived. She's feeling joyous because she herself narrates later that the master said, I'm happy you didn't come because if there was, they saw both of us together, they would have made some adverse comment. The whole spiritual atmosphere would have got spoiled by these cheap comments. How did mother know? She knew by her intuitive knowledge. And how did she deprive herself? How did she stop herself from going, from doing what she wanted? That is because she used her mental strength. At each point in his life, we find Swami Vivekananda using his mental strength. 